<laughs> wow, I didn't think I could coast on the edge. I'm always living on the edge. And by the way, if you ever wanted to get up here and you didn't want to do the really long glide, just come on over here. This is the perfect spot to get onto this great wall here. See? Nothing to it. What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel. Welcome back to Spyro 2. In the last episode, we did a level, and in this episode, we're doing another level. Imagine that, doing levels in a Spyro game. We're heading into Zephyr. It's always a battle between the land blubbers and birds. Okay, Spyro. Looks like we got us a bit of a situation here. The breeze builders have got us pinned down, and we've been waiting for a volunteer to blow up their munitions building. Looks like you're it. Who is the winning side? The land blubbers or the breeze builders? Anyway, the level Zephyr. Honestly, I could say that this is one of the levels where every difficulty spike, or not spike, but... Uh, every difficulty in the small challenges actually makes sense. This is kind of a average to somewhat difficult level, and it's all because of the multiple explosions going on with all the birds. You're looking for 400 gems, 4 orbs, and the talisman, the ruby bomb, which is one of my favorite looking talismans apart from the ice crystal. And the funny thing about this level is its Japanese name, Slime Ranch. All right, those grounded birds are terrible because they swallow the missiles, which, by the way, you would never think to see in a video game. And then they just, they can spit really far and they can hit you from down below. So if I was in that ditch and that bird wanted to spit a torpedo down at me, it could. And I'm trying to get this last bird so he doesn't attack me anymore. Come on. Yeah, one of the only ways to get this guy is to glide towards them. There we go, there we go. And no bomb for you. And what do you have to say? Dan Cannon just ain't working for me. Do you think you can blast that bird, soldier? Jump up here and give it a try. Sweet! We get to operate a cannon! Alright, aim and... Fire! Nothing to it, buddy. But now that we have full reign over the cannon, there's a lot of stuff we can blow up. To use the cannon, you just press the circle button to fire. And aiming is a little weird. You need to be able to judge distances like I cannot. So just a little more. Normally, when you miss a shot that looks like it should have hit, just move it a notch up or down. Uh, let's see. Nope. Nope. One up. Let's see. There we go. Very nice. Now for a history lesson for you. Zephyr, the level this is named after, is actually named after the Greek god of the West Wind. And that is your history lesson for today. Another thing about the design of this level, I actually really like it because it reminds me of a level from Spyro 1. Stone Hill, actually. And I love these enemies, by the way. They just barf up giant TNT barrels and they're ready to attack. How many have they eaten, by the way? Anyway, the background for this level shares a close resemblance to a level we'll be getting to a lot later, Robotica Farms. But it also looks like... That's adorable. And they died at the same time. I am such a monster! But this also shares the background with Stone Hill, which is kind of why it reminds me of it. It's also very well designed. You actually feel like you're going to new places. How dare you! Get out of here. And now we get another cannon! I wish to operate it, but first, death to caterpillars. Aim. Fire. That's very empowering to just be able to destroy everything. And I think I can hit that bird from here. Can I hit him? No? A little more. 
Come on, come on. I know I can get him. Yes! <laughs> the interesting thing about these enemies, at least in this level, I don't know how this happened. I mean, it could just have been a simple programming error, but in this level, there are supposedly 29 enemies to get rid of and get their spirit particles. But there's actually 30. But in the guidebook, it shows up as 29. A simple mistake I can see, and just like running around a corner and not being able to see a giant TNT barrel run into your face. But I thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't notice until actually doing this level in my practice run that there were more enemies than advertised. And there's one more cannon. By the way, this is the end of the level already. I can't believe how short these are. And if you ever wanted a, f a foolproof strategy to get birds in the distance, moving targets, just keep on firing. And you might eventually get them. Just, I guess timing is key. There we go. Can't believe that worked. Oh, a little over. Mm, a little over. And there we go. If you need a lot more precision, use the D-pad. Trust me, it really helps. Alright, a little more, a little more, come on. No. How about this one? No. How about this one? There we go. Oh, God! Oh, no! There was somebody in there! Oh, well, he'll be fine. I, I hear that land blubbers can take a decent explosion. Oh, n actually, this is okay. What on earth are these? What are these beasts? What are these beings? Look like a cross between a giraffe, a cow, and an elephant. These things are weird. Insomniac, what's wrong with you? Oh, they're everywhere! Oh, jeez, they might have a new species on our hands. My name is Little Bo Peep, and I have lost my cowlicks. With these battles going on all the time, they keep running away. Can you help me get them back into my pen? Sure, and I'm actually going to speed this up, because this challenge, I don't like this one very much. I like the level Zephyr itself, but this orb challenge takes a very, very long time. You have to either charge or flame the cowlicks towards the pen, and there are five of them. Well, you'll see that number increases just a little bit. But the charge works the best because the cowlicks go flying when you get them. The flame is more for the, the short part. There we go. If you flame them, they don't go as far, but they still go flying pretty hard. Alright, so over here should be the next two. Ah, here we go. Oh, wow, there's a lot to do in here. There's the fire blast that we're so fond of, and even more Calyx! Thank you! I've been looking for you guys. If this challenge didn't take forever, I'd look even harder. Alright, let's see if I can hit these birds. While I'm trying to hit these birds, here's some more trivia for you. Zephyr is one of the only two worlds to keep its English name. Oh, what? The English didn't want Slime Ranch? But no, one of two. The other one was Huracos, to keep its English name. And I can't hit that bird! Stay still! Ugh, I can't get him! There we go! There we go, jeez. Now I can collect my reward for blowing up a bird. Now, the best thing about Fire Blast is it sends the Cowlicks even farther and higher. Which is the only way to get them out of here, by the way. Out of this general area, actually. You can't charge them or flame them higher on that second platform, either. I can't believe I missed that one. Alright. I should have just... Woo! Wow. I'm surprised I made that. I should have actually hit them from that platform there, because... Well, maybe I just wanted to get up close and personal while I fire blast somebody in the face. I love the fire blast move. So overpowered. And here we have the introduction of the huh? jar. Hit it, and it teleports somewhere else. The question mark jar is not in too many levels, but it actually has a... Well, at least I got it. It does have a cool function. 
It'll go around the level and it'll eventually end up back at the beginning of the level. But as soon as you break it those multiple times and it ends up at the beginning of the level, you'll get a lot of gems. So it's kind of like a scavenger hunt, but you already know where it is. Because it'll always show you where it is. And goodbye, Calix! I knew thee well. And you're already out here. Wow, you guys are booking it. Oh, no. Hit him in the hitbox. Hit him in the hitbox! That is the funny thing, though. You can hit it, like, off to the side. Hit any Cowlick off to the side, and it... it their hitboxes are huge, which is why you can hit them and they go flying. In the hitbox. In the hitbox. And there you go, Bo Peep. Thanks, Spyro. Here's a little something, you know, for the effort. Mm, thank you very much, and that was phrased very weirdly. You have an interesting tone, Bo Peep. But thanks for the orb. There are two more cowlicks out there somewhere, but I haven't seen them in days. You fool, they might be dead! What's wrong with you? Well, now we have to go find two more cowlicks because Bo Peep is a terrible shepherd. Oh, and what do you have to say? What light from yonder window breaks? That window up there, dummy. The professor said he was working on a way to help me get back with Juliet, but I haven't seen him in a long time. Nobody can find anybody in this battlefield. This guy can't find the professor. That Bo Peep can't find his cowlicks. And <gasps> forbidden love. A land blubber and a breeze builder cannot be together. It is forbidden. I wonder who would be the Capulets. Uh, never mind, I haven't read Romeo and Juliet in a very long time, and since it's a kid ga kid's game, neither of them die. Oh my god, there's another cowlick. Just out of nowhere cowlick. Just go across, uh, go around the corner and, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Uh, might as well get him up here. These cowlicks are really difficult to get back to Bo Peep, because you saw that crevice we need to hit them across. I need to find the other one. I think I just jumped over it, actually. Even more gems down here. I wonder who's in charge of the gem placement in every level. Because you got to that's got to be the most fun job ever when creating a collectathon game, is just figuring out where to put everything. Like, I, that's probably where I would have the most fun, is just <laughs> taking the paste tool and just pasting green gems all over the place. And there's the professor. Spyro, my boy, I've got a magic bean, uh, I mean seed, for you in here somewhere. Uh, here it is. Why don't you plant it in the ground and see what grows? Aiming the seed by holding down the triangle button will make this easier. Oh, and if you ever need your seed back, just flame the plant and it will turn back into a seed again. That's such an interesting plant. Okay, so here's our magic bean seed. No, 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 I didn't want to talk to you. Never mind. So just aim it with triangle and... What the hell? Okay. So, um, that there's that. Oh, oops. You want to aim for right in the middle. That's where it'll plant there. Wow. So there's no difference between the plots of soil. It, it will just get bigger and bigger. And if you ever mess up on this puzzle, which this puzzle is actually kind of easy, but if you ever mess up and need to redo it, just talk to the professor. That's what he was doing over there. Wow! I think he's huge! All right. So here's where you actually need to take your magic bean seed. Seed bean, whichever. And I want to get rid of these birds. Boom! And get out of here. If you actually noticed, there was no more uh, flying torpedo birds, so they could never be uh, restocked in ammo. And by the way, here's the next bean seed out of many. But since they couldn't get re ammunized, I think I just made a word up. Since they couldn't get more torpedoes, they actually wouldn't attack you normally, but they can still, like, peck your eyes out or something. If you get too close, they will find a way to attack you. They just can't throw an explosion your way. And I can't get this. Get in there. There we go. Now I need to run back and get the other one. Shouldn't take too long. Oh god, I'm out of trivia. Hmm. Stall for time. Play me off, Johnny! Never mind, I got it. 
Man, getting those Calyx back is gonna be... Ugh, it's gonna be awful. I hope it doesn't take too long. There we go. So now, the third bean seed right up here. And I ate it during a hover. That doesn't happen often. I swear, the weirdest things that never happened to me while playing this game normally or just, you know, going through practice, nothing ever weird happens except when I'm recording, and I love it. I love being able to capture these things on film, and wow, that thing is... That is a weird bean seed plant. All right, so there is enemy 29 and enemy 30. So if you look in your guidebook, at this point, you will see that there are... It'll be 30 out of 29. It's very weird that they would make a small mistake like that. But then again, doesn't break anything, doesn't break the game, so it's okay. We'll let it pass. Hold on, Private Romeo. I mean, you're not good, at, good enough to get a, you know, an actual rank besides Private, but it's okay. Well done, my boy! Here are two more seeds to get you the rest of the way. Oh, and take this with you if you don't mind. It's been cluttering up my pockets. Are you the professor's cousin? Because, uh, I was trying to see if I could see the other professor, but sadly he's out of view. I love 3D modeling in games because you have to create your entire... Your entire area is in one big piece. So there's no, there's no like, teleport points or anything. Especially in these Spyro games where it's all one big level and there's no place to teleport. And throw that seed over there. Which means, in your giant level, there has to be multiples of every character. Some to say specific things. And that's how you do this puzzle. I'm not kidding, it was that easy and they gave us a difficulty way, way too much. I think the first puzzle was actually a lot more agonizing. And by the way, I love this voice actor. Romeo. Romeo! Wherefore art thou, Romeo? Oh, there's Romeo! You can have this! I don't need it anymore! <laughs> I love that actor! I swear, all the actors in this game are just having too much fun, and I love it. So off flies Juliet to her beloved Romeo, who sh she would have seen if had she, uh, you know, turned around. Aww, oh, Forbidden Love. I really hope they don't die, but in this battlefield... <sighs> war, war is hell. Especially on lovers. So now we need to get these Cowlicks back. And this is where the difficulty actually, you know, comes in full force, because uh, if they fall down, you need to hit them all the way back around and get them back. So I'm going to try my best, my very, very best, to only have to do this once. What you gotta do is get them close enough to the edge to where you can charge them across that gap. Against the wall? Yeah, okay. So, oh, there we go. And luckily they move. They don't just sit there like a bump on a log. So there. Oh, he's going towards the edge. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna speed up the rest of this. See you guys in a bit. for me. Here's a fair reward. Thank you very much, and thank God for post-production. And there is our fourth orb out of four. Thank you very much. So let's go ahead and head back and see that, uh, no, actually, we need to go get the huh jar, because I want the rest of that treasure. I don't know about you, but do we go up here and, oh yeah, there it is. So it didn't go too far. There we go. I'm sorry, Caterpillar, you had to die for the cause. You had to die for the war cause. It's always the young ones that have to die for the war. Nobody ever thinks of the Caterpillars! Which turn into butterflies after murdering them. So, is that how science works? Science always told me a cocoon was involved, but nope. 
You just have to flame a caterpillar, and it turns into a butterfly. Sometimes it turns into a fancy blue one. So the question mark jar goes all the way back to the beginning of the level. It's actually not that bad. You would think that having to backtrack through all this would be annoying, but really, it doesn't, because the levels are so short. So anyway, I'll see you back near the end of the level. Here we go, and... Are you okay, buddy? You shouldn't be alive right now. Lubbers are tough. Wow! What an explosion! It sure is a good thing I had my helmet on. Oh yeah, the colonel wanted me to give this talisman to you if you got through the breeze builder defenses. Good job, soldier! Uh, yeah, that's how helmet works. So anyway, we get the Zephyr Talisman, the Ruby Bomb, which is a very, very pretty color. I love how that talisman looks. We've made it through war! That's reminiscing of Conquer here. Cannon made by the Acme Corporation. Love it. Alright, so we've got plenty of levels to go to next. But I'm indecisive. So, let's head on over. So we can either go to Skelos Badlands or Breeze Harbor over there. Which one do I want to go to? Hmm... I think I'll make my decision in the next episode. So, next time on Spyro 2, we'll be going to a level. See you guys next time!